data over time. As of one month ago, what did I believe was the truth yesterday? And what was actually the truth yesterday that I believed yesterday? Now, you know, when you get asked these kind of questions, as a developer, this is kind of like your reaction. Like, this, this is really, really hard. Um, so, to come back to the original problem, a temporal database is a database with built-in support for handling data involving time. So my aim tonight is to give you a really brief introduction to handling temporal data using SQL or SQL databases. And I'm hoping that at the end of this talk you'll have enough information to go away and do a bit more research and find out more for yourselves. And I'm going to concentrate on SQL databases for this talk. Um, the little bit of research I've done on NoSQL databases, as far as I can tell, no one is really handling this problem in NoSQL at all. Um, I believe Edgebase has got um, support for handling this kind of data. If anyone knows any differently, feel free to contradict me. Um, otherwise, I'll take that as an assumption for now. Um, and I should also answer at this point, well, why might you want to do this? Why might you need to track all these changes to data over time? The one that I'm most familiar with, the most familiar use case, is HR records. So I work for NetSuite and HR. I think SQL 2011, uh, the biggest change in SQL 2011 is support for temporal data types and temporal tables. And one other thing at this point, I'm going to use some sample data in the next few slides when I try and illustrate some of these temporal concepts. And the table is um, simple, you might even say simplistic. It's just two columns, we've got owner of some piece of property and the name of some property. So I just wonder over here that I'm not using. So what forms of temporal data are normally stored? For temporal theory, we talk about temporal aspects. And as of the current time, as of now, there are three main temporal aspects that are tracked, that can be tracked, or that are typically tracked. And those are decision time, valid time, and transaction time. A table that supports one of these things is called a temporal table, can be called a temporal table. Two is a bi-temporal table, more than two is multi-temporal. You don't normally go further than two because you start twisting yourself into all kinds of problems. So the first one of these, let's take a look at decision time. This is very simple to call. Decision time is simply a timestamp that records when was this data inserted or when was it changed. Um, this allows you for a certain amount of granularity as well. The timestamp could be a year, it could be a day, it could be a microsecond, it could be a month, whatever you like. You get to choose that in this case. And many of you are probably thinking, well, this looks very really familiar. And of course it is. You know, anyone who's done in MySQL, you know, on insert set current timestamp or on update set current timestamp, you're already using decision time. And what is this often used for um, is in applications that are tracking financial data. So a transaction occurs at a certain time, you have a certain time sample when it occurred. And then using this, you can actually then trace back through time and see what were the changes to this account at the time. This works great for things like an account where you want to chase, or trace changes to the balance over time. It really falls short when you're trying to um, trace changes to something in the real world, like an employee, a product. Something else that they've actually modeled something in the real world. So, transaction or sorry, decision time on its own is good for storing certain amounts of data, but it goes nowhere near enough. And of course, the decision time example anyone who's worked with databases will be familiar with this. And you have um, an owner property and you've got the decision time when was this uh, piece of information changed or inserted? And of course, what this gives us is it tells us when it changed, but it doesn't give you any information about the range, the period of time when this information was considered to be valid. So, while this can get you some part of the way, it's nowhere near enough. And to move on from that, what we have to consider is what's called in temporal theory valid time. So valid time is the time in which a fact or a piece of information is stored in the database is considered to be true to the real world. Um, it's modeled using a range between two timestamps, between two dates. So what you have is a period of time for which this piece of information is considered to be true. So, um, What's also important to note is that valid time is always closed at the lower end. That when you insert a record, you have to insert something that says when the valid time begins. It can be closed or it can be open at the upper end. If we currently believe that this piece of information is true, then valid time is open at the upper end. And there's actually quite a lot of discussion, I believe, in the SQL communities. How do you model this in time? Because, you know, for the, uh, the upper end of the valid time, saying no for the value is not really that well. So how do you model the, the concept of infinity? Is it the, the maximum time that the system can store is the, the, the character of infinity. Um, the other thing to note with this as well is that valid time can be in the past, it can be in the present, or it can be in the future. So I can insert a record about a database, it could, in a database. It could be about historical information. It's valid from 1850 to 1905. That's fine, that's its valid time. I can store records which only become valid in six months' time. 
And then using temporal databases, I can tell the database to show me data that is valid for a certain time period as well. Um, this allows us to do forecasting across in the future. So what does this look like? Well, very simply, um, again, these examples are more just to show you the concept rather than what you see in a real database. But we've got the island is used property from uh, the 20th of September 2012. I stopped owning it on the 20th of February, and then Adam owns it from February the 21st, and he currently owns it. Therefore, we have no end in the value of time here. So it's not again. I've, I've chosen to represent that using the character infinity there. This gets us a long way along to achieving what we need. However, there's an extra complication we can throw in. So let's say we made a mistake. We've inserted this data, um, let's say we've inserted it back in 2012 when I owned this property, and then we've changed it, you know, in uh, 2014 when I've, when, I've not, when I've stopped owning this property. Problem is, we got the date when I stopped owning this property wrong. Instead of stopping owning it in February, I owned it in March, I stopped owning it in March. So the period of time is actually wrong. Now, how can we deal with it? Well, one way we can go back to the database, and we can actually change the valid time. So, which is what has effectively happened here. So we now say that I stopped owning this property on the 20th of March 2014, and it begins only on the 21st. The issue with this is that we have now lost the ability to ever know that the data is ever stored as anything else. Now that may be important to you, it may not be important to you. For HR, it's extremely important. If we make a mistake in someone's HR record and they sue us about it later, we want to know when was that information stored in the database, when was it changed, who changed it, how was it changed. Okay? So valid time on its own cannot tell us this. Valid time just tells us, in the real world, when do we believe this fact to be true. It doesn't tell us what period of time do we actually believe this data to be true. And for that, the concept that we use is called transaction time. So, as I said, it's really the period of time that we, uh, that we actually believe this piece of data to be true in the real, real world. This is different to valid time. Valid time models, um, sorry, let me get this right. Valid time models in the real world when we consider this piece of data to be true. Transaction time models when this data was actually the truth. Here's a stupid example. I can believe that the sky is green. Maybe they say I've got some weird form of color blindness. For my entire life, when I was born in 1972 to now, I've believed the sky is green. Someone today categorically proves to me that the sky is blue. Right? We want to actually record when I started to believe that as well, so we would use transaction time to do that. As with valid time, transaction time is modeled using a start and an end. Um, it's modeled as a range between two timestamps. It's always closed at the lower end, but again, uh, like valid time, it can be open at the upper end as well. Um, and really, as long as we consider something to be the truth, the uh, upper end um, is, is open, as in valid time as well. Now, is anything unclear about those concepts at the moment? Would anyone like to ask me any questions? Let's say that we inserted uh, at the same time that I own the property. So the start of the transaction time is back in 2012, uh, on the 8th, or sorry, the 28th of September. I've, I stopped owning this property. Um, that's, okay, let's get this right. I stopped believing that I own this property until this time, in 2014, on September 9th. So you see we've got our first two records. Then I insert two more records here, which includes where I actually own the property. Now, the transaction time is now open because we still believe this fact to be the truth at the current time. Is that clear? People look slightly stunned.